Good evening all. I wrap Stephen of Glinden Associates with your financial market wrap up and this wrap up is for Wednesday evening and we're now on the 28th of April 2021 at 6:40 p.m. So we got through one big hurdle today, the FOMC policy statement and the Fed chair press conference. Tomorrow morning we get the GDP numbers, but tonight we get President Biden's speech. Uh, he won't get his normal fanfare. There's only going to be, I understand, about 200 people in the chamber that normally has about 1,600 in it for this uh, first speech by the president. Uh, say la vie. I can tell you what the speech is going to be about. Spend, spend, spend. Tax the rich, tax the rich. That's what it's going to be about. You'll tell me it's going to be about all the other things, but at the end of the day, I've given you the scenario as to what it is. So the market focused today on the Fed, and I think it walked away with the idea, and the Fed chair made it bluntly clear. He would like inflation to overshoot. The Fed has the tools to rein it back in, which means raising interest rates. The Fed doesn't want to go to negative interest rates to spur inflation on, but he calls the current boost that we're getting, be it the grain prices, the copper prices, uh, the goods prices we're seeing in lumber and other areas, uh, transitory. He was asked about the housing market. He does not see it as a bubble. So that gave you the ideas there as well. What is he worried about? Well, obviously COVID's always a worry, but I think I got the impression he realizes we're getting it under control here in the United States. It's not under control in other parts of the world. I think he's worried about employment more than anything. And I think he made it clear when he expounded on the fact that he thinks a lot of the service industry jobs just simply aren't going to return. And that the technology that's happened over this past year in different parts of the service industry, those jobs are being replaced by technology and those people have to be, that are without those jobs, repurposed. That's my takeaway. Does not mean I'm right. Okay, so where are we in the markets? Let's go to that. If you look at the weekly area of charts, you're at an all-time high. If you were to close right now and not reopen, you're at an all-time high. There's nothing bearish about that. When you take a look at the daily bar chart, are you noticing the volatility came out of the market? Is this going to be a springboard for higher prices or a pullback? Your guess is as good as everybody else on the street. When I come in and I look at the chart and I put the swing line, instead of getting confused as that is, and that is confusing to me, I see the mark. By the way, some people will take a line and draw here and draw here. They're going to force it to be a wedge and say it's going to come out to the upside. Learn wedge patterns. If you haven't, go to our website and get the futures trading kit and our free offerings. You, you, I think you'll like what you see there. On this particular chart, when I put the swing lines, I get higher lows, higher highs. Bullish. When I put the moving average on the market, it's over it. The bias is up. The resistance is going to come in, as I see it at least, at 42.1475, the, uh, let's call that the upper Bollinger Band. The real number is 83, but you round down since the market's, uh, since that's above the market to where the resistance might be. Again, I teach that in the charting course. And when I look at momentum, it's embedded. I have no reason to be bearish. It's that simple. Uh, if the market corrects and takes it out of the bull trend, we'll see it with the red line closing under 80. It hasn't yet. So this chart is still to me bullish. The NASDAQ is not in that camp. The NASDAQ lost its bullishness back here when the embedded reading was lost and not regained right there. And since then, we've been in something of a correction. You made an attempt today, and that's a pretty good attempt to hit the 18-day average. You could still hit it. Resistance above the market. Can anything turn the market bullish right here? It could. Should this market get over 14,050, you would get a pattern if it just did it with leaving the low in places it is of higher lows and then a higher high. Admittedly, the resistance is right over you at the 14,120.75, but that would turn it bullish. Any close under 13,878, because you already have the swing line down and you close there with momentum down, could say that from there you might extend down to the 13,600 level. 
in the Dow. You've been in that correction phase. And if you'll recall, when we lost the embedded readings, we were talking, will the market get down back to the 18-day average of closes? I was of the opinion it would. And this is what the market did. And I, you know, I get wise people that will always write and say, boy, you really goofed on that one. Okay. I, Believe me, I make a lot of mistakes. You, you won't get to my personality. I've had everything, every wrong call a human being can do. But in this case, God was on my side, right? You know, I'm kidding about that part, but the action worked. Is this bearish? It's not, folks. What this is is the market's reaffirmed itself. If you go to the longer term charts, this is not an upsetting move. Could we go short term bearish and see the market back at 33,284? We certainly could. I look at the daily chart each day at a time. I look at the weekly chart each week at a time. Very different approaches. You love when they come together because the five days here make up what the week is. I am neutral on this market right at this minute. Uh, momentum down, bias is trading right now up. You're over the 18-day average by 10 points in the swing line down. In the Russell, you're overbought. You need both numbers in the slow stochastic to be going over 80 sideways for several days to be embedded. When they're both or either of them over 70 and not doing that, they're overbought. Where are you fighting your resistance? The upper Bollinger Band. Could this eventually be a base or a top to work from? Oh yeah, I'm very aware of it. And the weekly charts are looking different than this chart. So could this set off upward? It could, but it hasn't. So you wait for the motion. You know, charting, the difficulty, you're all trying to anticipate what the chart is probably doing. And I learned years ago to go with what the chart is doing. Very different themes on that. I used to be in the other school, and boy, did that cost me. I'd rather be the Johnny come lately until the high percentage trade is gone. It could be a loser, but I'll stay with the high percentages. In the VIX, you got lower highs, lower lows. That's friendly stock market. Where'd the market finish today? 1728 under the 18 day average and momentum down. Unless you get back over this 1817 level, what is the trend? Down. Now, pay attention. You're narrowing in all this. You're losing your volatility in the market. That could drift for a long time. We saw that happen in 2019. You drifted for most of the year. And what did the stock market do? It rallied. That's, I'm not predicting that's going